huge trouble at Alpha Tori is brewing. Currently, Daniel Ricciardo and Yuki Tsunoda battle each other as teammates for the coveted spot at Red Bull next season. Yuki Tsunoda's outstanding performance at the Belgian Grand Prix brought the score level. The surprise inclusion of Daniel Ricciardo in Alpha Tori before the Hungarian race has worried the fans of Sergio Perez and Yuki Tsunoda. Despite what Red Bull may say, Ricardo's presence is intended to assess Yuki's suitability for a Red Bull seat and put pressure on Perez to improve or face potential replacement by the end of the season. But is Red Bull planning to bring the Honey Badger, or is it all just to test Sonoda? Stay until the end of the video to find out. People might have expected Nick de Vries to be replaced due to his poor start to the season, but nobody would have predicted he'd leave when he did. However, as Helmut Marco mentioned, waiting two races for the summer break wouldn't have made a difference. Red Bull was ready with Daniel Ricciardo and they'd seen enough to make the decision. At the Hungarian Grand Prix, Ricciardo demonstrated just how prepared he was. After his first day of running on the Friday of his comeback weekend, he felt 95% comfortable. Despite being let go by McLaren in a rather abrupt manner, despite being in the slowest car on the grid, Daniel Ricciardo had an impressive qualifying performance. He reached Q2 and secured the 13th position, four places ahead of his teammate Yuki Tsunoda, who was eliminated in Q1. In his first race since last November's Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, Ricciardo faced a dramatic start. He was hit by Zhu Alphas Romeo at the first corner, which then led to an additional contact with Alpine's Esteban Ocon. But nonetheless, the dramatic start and being at the back of the grid, Daniel Ricciardo managed to escape unharmed. He made an early second pit stop, which turned out to be a key move in his race and this strategic decision allowed him to overtake several rivals. Finishing in 13th place might not seem remarkable at first glance, but considering the circumstances and the unfamiliar Alfa Tauri car, it was a solid performance from Ricciardo. And let's not forget that he had only one simulator session with Alfa Tauri before the Hungarian race. Before the race, Yuki told the media that he wasn't afraid of the challenge. He acknowledged that it would become evident soon, and the slower driver between him and Daniel Ricciardo might not get a chance at Red Bull. Yuki understood the stakes that were in place in the second half of the season and knew that the faster driver has a better chance to move up in Formula 1. Many were surprised and didn't expect him to be so straightforward and fierce in the media about it. But to be fair, this is the same man who made his mark with passionate screams and outbursts of anger on team radio during his first two years in F1. Yuki acknowledges a challenge ahead and doesn't see much difference between racing against Daniel or Nick. He knows he has to do the same thing he did with Nick, which is to beat his teammate. To him, that is the most crucial factor. Daniel is not an easy driver to beat, but at the same time I'll do what I did in the last couple of races and it's clear the faster guy will stay or go up. That's it said Yuki Tsunoda. After finishing behind his teammate in Hungary, Yuki might have been concerned that Red Bull would be favoring Daniel over him. However, Yuki's performance in F1 has been improving, and he's been making progress. Alpha Tori's overall form might have declined during Yuki's time there, but that's completely not his fault. Yuki's results in Belgium would have boosted his confidence, although ironically, he did to Daniel exactly what Daniel had done to him in the previous race. He delivered an outstanding performance that impressed both fans and the media while his teammate was nowhere to be found. What a difference a week can make. It was a powerful response after facing several setbacks the previous week for Yuki. On the other hand, Daniel seemed to have an easy path to Q2 on Friday at the Belgian Grand Prix. However, a small error during his final run in the first session resulted in a penalty for exceeding track limits, and his time was deleted. In contrast, Yuki excelled in the fastest one-lap session and missed out on final qualifying by just over 0.3 seconds, securing the 11th place on the grid for the Grand Prix. Yuki impressed by climbing as high as 6th at one point, but different tyre strategies affected his position and he ultimately finished in 10th, earning his third point of the season. On the other hand, Daniel had a tough race, finishing in 16th place with only two drivers classified as finishing behind him. Daniel, the experienced Red Bull driver, now has four weeks to reflect on his subpar performance in Spa. He will likely be thinking about the capabilities and how to improve the car that he's been assigned to drive until the end of the season. Everything was going well for Sonoda before the sacking of De Vries, and it seemed that his position at Honda-sponsored Alfa Tori was secure. However, as Ted Kravitz explained in his feature, things changed at the Budapest circuit, leaving fans wondering about Yuki's future. Poor Yuki, he's battled gamely with his car all year, and now is being shown which way to go by Daniel Ricciardo. 17 seconds behind Daniel Ricciardo. I know he didn't get the rub of the green with the first stop, but that is a bit ouchy for poor Yuki. So Ricciardo is clearly the team leader. He's clearly the team leader now. I'm sorry Yuki, but he is. 
You can understand that. He's a seven or eight time Grand Prix winner, said Kravitz. And then Yuki planned a nice response to this. It was evident that his own performance and the media's response to the result in Hungary didn't sit well with him. At the Belgian Spa, he drove like a title winner. On the other hand, Daniel Ricciardo had a reality check after a rather uneventful race at Spa, where he finally realized that his Alfa Tauri is one of the worst cars on the grid. Throughout the weekend, he was almost forgotten and struggled to make an impact. What's concerning for Ricardo is that his teammate, Yuki Tsunoda, managed to secure a championship point for the third time this year, finishing in 10th place, which is a remarkable achievement given the car's limitations. Ricardo, on the other hand, finished more than 23 seconds behind Yuki, just one day after Ted Kravitz reaffirmed his claim that Ricardo is now the team leader at Alfa Tauri. After the race, Ricardo admitted that it had been a tough day at the office. He plans to use a four-week summer break before the Dutch Grand Prix on August 27th to focus on improving his race fitness by hitting the gym. Increasingly, Ricardo and Sonoda had different opinions about their cars at the end of the race. Sonoda said that his Alfa Tauri was performing exceptionally well, while Ricardo wasn't convinced about Red Bull's sister team's performance. Everyone knows that the AGO4 car is not performing well and blaming the car won't save Ricardo's face, especially after being convincingly beaten by his teammate, but he's still trying to do so. Honestly, it was tough in traffic. Maybe a race with more clear air could have been better, but in general I'm not convinced we had a great pace today. It felt like we never got the peak out of the tires and we couldn't generate enough grip in the second sector. When we were in clear air later in the race, I felt we were more competitive, but in traffic it was definitely hard. The reality is, these were my dry laps in this car on this track, and I don't know this car that well yet, so I still felt there was a little missing, but we'll figure it out," reflected Ricardo. You can understand that he's still getting used to the car and may not have the setup dialed in perfectly. It's okay to acknowledge that he's still learning. However, after the summer break, he'll still need to come back strong because his teammate delivered one of his best performances of the season in response to being beaten a week earlier. In his post-race analysis, Ted Kravitz quickly mentioned what happened to Daniel Ricciardo today and didn't really talk a lot about him. However, he emphasized that Yuki Tsunoda was the real story at Alfa Tauri. He also mentioned Yuki's brilliant result finishing in 10th place and earning one point, and also said that he was close enough that he could have overtaken Lance Stroll for 9th place. Yuki's performance was praised across the board in the post-race driver ratings, with 9s and 10s being given to him. On the other hand, the best rating Ricardo received was a 5 out of 10. The rivalry between Yuki and Ricardo is becoming the focal point of the battle at the back of the grid for the rest of the season. To make things worse for Ricardo, Sergio Perez's second-place finish in the race marked his 33rd career podium, surpassing Ricardo's 32 podiums. With two podium finishes since Ricardo's return to the grid, Perez is paying attention to the situation and is not backing down under the pressure of Ricardo's challenge. Instead, he is rising to the challenge. What do you think about this duel? Do you think the youth will prevail over the experienced? Let us know in the comments below.